This is the Weekly on ClickOrlando.com with Justin Warmith. Good morning, I'm Justin Warmith. There have been many movies on the rise of robots trying to show the world what artificial intelligence or AI might look like in the future. Thanks Star Trek, iRobot, and HAL from 2001 A Space Odyssey. Today, though, we're surrounded by AI that's far more mundane than those examples. Your social media feed, voice to text, that robot cleaning your floors, all examples of artificial intelligence. But the rapid rise of a new AI application called ChatGPT has spawned hope and fear about the potential impacts artificial intelligence will have on humanity, given its ability to write and respond in human-like ways. This morning, Dr. Rebecca Lees, a computer science program director at Full Sail University, is here to help us better understand the world of AI. My background is in, first I started in psychology, and then I moved into modeling and simulation. And a lot of my work background is related to things like VR and simulation for training. And then I moved on to a dissertation looking at specifically natural language processing trying to figure out what knowledge, skills, and abilities that students need in order to succeed, trying to figure out the gap between what is requested, what is taught, and what is applied, and trying, how to, trying to figure out how to reduce that gap. Mm. Um, specifically at Full Sail, I am a program director. I apply those skills I learned in my dissertation as a program director for the Computer Science Mobile Development Concentration, the User Experience Bachelors, and the Computer Science Masters. Mm. You said something that I think is, is important, and I want to ask you the, the correlation between psychology and then what you do now. How do those go hand in hand? Great question. So a lot of times within technology, we have to figure out how do we interact with technology? Mm -hmm. How do humans interact with technology? So there's two parts to that. There's how do we make technology more um, user friendly? And then there's also how do we mimic human behavior with technology? And that's where you get into things like artificial intelligence. Mm -hmm. And we're seeing that with uh, chat GPT. Yes. I think if you're folks at home, um, there's, there's a strong likelihood that they have maybe heard of this, ChatGPT. Mm -hmm. it, it really took the internet by storm and it's been making its way all across different uh, national media outlets. Let's start with the reaction to your, the popularity that it, that it received. Were you surprised by ChatGPT's popularity initially? No, not really. Yeah. Um, you know, AI's been around for a while. Mm -hmm. uh, specifically, ChatGPT, um, I know that it became really popular really quickly. Mm -hmm. um, so that was really cool. Uh, chat GPT is just like any other tool. Um, it can be used for a lot of different reasons. And it kind of is really exciting uh, to be able to use a tool like chat GPT to do things like draft emails or you know, help you with projects. Mm -hmm. um, it's a really great starting point, a jumping off point. Um, as far as like the popularity, there's a lot of things that you can use chat GPT for, which is um, really exciting and cool, amazing stuff. Um, there's other things that you can use AI for uh, related to entertainment. Uh, specifically, there are some examples related to things like theme parks. So you can use queuing simulations for trying to figure out lines mm. within theme parks, how to reduce those lines. Like the genie at yes. Disney. Yes. That's, a, that's the similar way of, that's AI integrated in today's world. I think you hear artificial intelligence or AI and it, it might freak some folks out, but it's already in our day-to-day -day lives. Yes. <laughs> Let's Definitely. go over some other things that people may not have any idea that that is what is happening sure. in their day-to-day -day life. Uh, so, for example, on my way here, yeah. I plugged in the address into GPS and it optimized my route. That is a form of AI. Um, sending a text to a loved one telling them that I've uh, arrived here is another form, using voice control, mm -hmm. is another form of AI as well. Uh, there's a lot of different applications for using AI. There's things in, let's say, healthcare, entertainment industry, mm -hmm. a lot of different things. Yeah, people think of AI, they think of robots, right? Correct. <laughs> um, that That is a, a part of it, though, if I'm not mistaken. I mean, there, that is a, a, a piece of this is, you know, making things more automated mm -hmm. um, and, and taking Things, taking a little bit of um, you know the the work off of the human mm -hmm. right but but the correlation between the two are hand in hand mm -hmm. right can you talk about that for folks at home who might be concerned about their future the societal impacts that this might have on them and their industry that they where they work 
it's a it's something that goes hand in hand. Yeah, sure. So um, the purpose of AI, especially in workflow, is not to replace the human. Um, we still want to have that human element. Um, one of the reasons why we still want to have that human element is we're finding that sometimes AI is still a little fuzzy or incorrect in certain instances, so we want to have somebody there to essentially supervise it. Um, the other thing too, though, is that you can use it for a lot of different things within your workflow to ease your workflow. Mm -hmm. So some of the tasks that either take a long time or are very repetitive, you can teach a computer program or an AI specifically to do those things so that you don't have to and that frees up humans to do a lot of other really cool thinking mm -hmm. and innovating in different ways. Talk about what your students are learning at, at Full Sail sure. um, and, and what you're training them to be in the future. So we have two different programs that focus in on AI. The first one is the Computer Science Bachelors with AI Concentration where we teach things like data visualization or data science, machine intelligence or machine learning. Uh, we do things like natural language processing, computer vision, uh, human AI interaction, security for AI, and that's a lot of like really awesome, cool topics. Mm -hmm. um, then we expand on those topics into the computer science masters where we focus in on AI as one of our key concept areas, and our other two key concept areas there are data science and human computer interaction. Mm -hmm. So some of those same topics are are brought into the masters and we're looking at in into things like research and development in those areas. So what we're really essentially trying to do though is prepare students for the technology pipeline here in Orlando and beyond. Um, we're trying to teach them how to be not only discerning users but developers as well. Mm. So Very neat, very neat and it's crazy it seems like you're you're training these students for jobs perhaps that may not be existing at this point. In 2023, March 2023, they may not exist right now. Mm -hmm. But by the time they are finished, mm -hmm. they will have a degree for a job that is now, and maybe in 2025, 2026, then that job is now become available. I think mm -hmm. that's so fascinating. Is that true? Yeah, uh, there's always new upcoming jobs yeah. that we're seeing. We're constantly trying to figure out what types of jobs are evolving from mm. these types of technologies. We're focused specifically on emerging technologies and trying to figure out what is what trends do we see in order to figure out how we can best prepare students moving forward. Mm. And we use techniques like machine learning, AI, to try to figure those things out. I, I sh probably should have led with this, but how would you define artificial intelligence? What is it? Sure, so um, artificial intelligence is essentially a way for machines to mimic human behavior. There are generally two different categories of artificial intelligence. There's narrow mm. AI and general AI. And what we think of a as AI is typically general AI. Um, narrow AI is focusing in on one task or a set of very specific tasks, whereas general AI can do essentially what a human does, mm -hmm. all of the different things humans can do. So you can think of narrow AI as something like self-driving cars, where they're going to be detecting lane lines, trying to figure out if a pedestrian is on the street, mm -hmm. whereas a general AI, you can think of like data from Star Trek. You know, I, chat GPT, um, is this, and, and really I think this is a, an introduction to the what could be coming in the future, right? Mm -hmm. But is this just the tip of the iceberg when it yes, comes to AI? Definitely. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of really cool and new stuff coming up. Mm -hmm. um, Chat GPT allows us, it's like a calculator, it's a tool. Mm. Um, so there's a lot of things where, you know, educators in the past said, we're not going to have calculators, you need to know this math, right? Now we have essentially mini computers in our pockets mm. in the forms of smartphones mm -hmm. with calculators. Uh, so we have to figure out how do we um, use that tool? to the best of our abilities, um, because you still need to know the underlying math when you're using a computer. You still need to know the underlying AI concepts when you're using an AI tool. And we'll have more on the rise of artificial intelligence with Dr. Lee's coming up, including some of the concerns she has in the future. Stay with us. This is The Weekly on ClickOrlando.com with Justin Warmith. Welcome back. This morning, we're taking a look at the evolution of artificial intelligence and its potential societal impacts in the future. Here's more of my conversation with Dr. Rebecca Lees, a computer science program director at Full Sail University. 
As far as down the line, is there something that you think just someone at home should be preparing for in the future at all? Or, or maybe a, a certain, in the near term, in the near future, industries that might be impacted first by, by this new wave? Um, so I don't have a crystal ball, yeah. but there are a lot of different industries that could be impacted. We talked a little bit about how can ease workflow for like writing emails, mm -hmm. and a lot of industries are impacted by that. Um, as far as like seeing it in everyday household uh, you know, instances, there are things where you can use AI, specifically computer vision, which is a type of AI that uses visual images. And you can use this to try to figure out different ways of interacting with a, a space. So say that somebody is visually impaired, um, for accessibility reasons, they might want to use voice control, and that's one way of being able to interact with technology, mm -hmm. human AI interaction. You can use voice control to talk to a device and ask it to set a timer. You can also use different devices with cameras to be able to identify different things in your house, say you're cooking and you want to know, and you're visually impaired and you want to know what kind of spice you just picked out of your spice rack. You can use a smart device with a camera to try to figure out what that spice is and it will tell you what it is. So clearly they, this has a, there are a ton of pros to AI and, mm -hmm. and there's so many different ways that people who maybe today uh, Will it, things will be easier for them in the future because of artificial intelligence? Is there anything though that concerns you about AI in the future? Yeah. Um, so there are a couple of things that specifically uh, I'm worried about, and one of those things is not testing enough before launching an mm -hmm. AI uh, software. So um, one of the things that's really important when talking about AI is ethics and philosophy. Mm -hmm. What does intelligence mean? is the philosophy part and how do we mimic that? And then also what are what can we use the technology for in order to do good things, in order to make a positive impact? Mm -hmm. So those are things that we focus in on for students at Full Sail. Um, like I said, we are talking about how do we create discerning uh, developers? Mm -hmm. so how do we make sure that they are using these for good reasons? There are a lot of examples of how you can use them for positive reasons, including like healthcare. Um, they've used computer vision specifically to try to figure out how to diagnose specific diseases, looking at x-rays um, and doing that automatically so you don't need necessarily a doctor there. Um, a doctor should be there to check those results for sure. We're talking about those human elements still being included. Right. Um, but it can kind of preemptively say, hey, you might want to look at this, mm -hmm. which is really awesome. You know, it, it's you talk it, at the water cooler or something, with, maybe with friends, and I think the, the mind just sort of goes to movies, mm -hmm. right? And, and the future of coexisting with potential robots. And, and listen, I'm not gonna go down that road, but I, I think, you know, since I do have an expert here in the field about just easing maybe concerns about a potential threat to humanity when it comes to artificial intelligence and maybe uh, becoming sentient. I think that's the word where they, mm -hmm. you know, can create their own thoughts and, and things like that and um, don't necessarily have to have a, a code to perform a task, if you will, and they can create feeling and things like that. Is that, is that something that you think is realistic? I'm not saying I, robot, I'm not going down that stretch, but about coexisting with Having a coworker essentially uh, as a robot is that something that is is a potential? Yeah, we can we could f coexist with robots in a positive fashion. Mm -hmm. um, there are a lot of things related to how we build AI in order to make sure that that is um, safely and effectively and appropriately, um, you know, launched. Mm -hmm. And so going back to the idea of, of making sure that we're launching at an appropriate time. Is there enough testing that has been done to make sure that it is performing the way that we expect it to? Mm -hmm. um, and there's a, there's a lot of tests that are put in place to make sure that that happens before things get launched. Um, there are some negative examples in media, but for the most part, Full Sail is trying to focus in on where can we uh, kind of uh, steer students in order to make sure that those things don't happen. So we're focusing in on how do we make 
good AI? Mm -hmm. How do we create things that are going to be uh, helping us and cooperative? Mm -hmm. So interesting. Um, are, are you seeing just in the the last maybe couple of years? Are you seeing more students enroll in programs that you teach? Oh yes. This Definitely. is this is a growing popularity as far mm -hmm. as picking a degree. Correct. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. So emerging technology emerging, in, ge in yeah. general. Yeah. In general. Mm -hmm. uh, how does Full Sail separate itself from from other uh, institutions? Uh, and how you guys teach students as opposed to maybe, you know, how, how do you separate yourself? What, what makes Full Sail the best? So Full Sail, we are unique in that we have accelerated programs that are focused on project-based learning. So we're trying to show the students that they can apply the knowledge, that apply the theory that we've talked about, mm -hmm. and make things in order to best learn. And Research shows that in using project-based learning that it usually sticks a lot more. So later on down the line, you don't have to reteach yourself because you've learned it as you're going through and you've mm -hmm. applied it within context. Mm -hmm. What makes your job so great? What, what makes you excited to go to work every day? Is it something about this evolving tech space and, and things like that? Definitely. Yeah. Um, I'm very excited specifically in AI. Yeah. Um, and user experiences are my two passionate areas. Mm -hmm. um, my dissertation, like I said, specifically focused in on trying to figure out where the gaps are and using things like machine learning and data science, using those techniques to try to figure out how can we shorten those gaps, where identify them and then shorten them is really cool to me. I get super excited about it and I love being able to apply that in my job mm -hmm. and help create curriculum that is going to be helpful and useful um, at the end of the day. What's the one thing, um, I know it's a broad, AI is broad, it, it, there's so many layers to it, but if there's one thing in particular that you are most excited about when it comes to the future, what would that be? It's a great question. Uh, so as far as using AI, I think one of the areas that it could be most helpful in is healthcare. Mm -hmm. So I was talking about the x-rays, yeah. that's really cool, but how can we use data in order to try to predict diseases down the line? Um, that's a, a really cool area and space as well. Um, how do we use AI to train people to um, do surgery or those types of things. We have a lot of, of tools available to us, especially in the Orlando area, um, with a lot of our technology pipelines mm -hmm. built up. Uh, so I think this is a really awesome space to be able to do that and then having our students take advantage of that and then go beyond is really exciting to me. And my thanks to Dr. Lee for her time and insight this morning. For more information on everything we touched on when it comes to the future of artificial intelligence, just head to clickorlando.com weekly. I'm Justin Mormuth. Hope you have a great Sunday.